Welcome to my real personality. This is Gloria in real life. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, hello, my name is Gloria. I'm a fourth year dental student at Tufts. I'm a little sad because I recorded this during the day before the sunset, um, but I can't use those footages. So here I am again, I'm a little fed up. And I think this video may be the first entry video to understanding my personality. I'm about to drink wine and record this because like, I'm sad, okay? I'm sad. I'll be back. <sighs> Cheers. I know, I'm like, okay, I'm like top ready and like half of my PJs, okay? It's, I'm always recording in this room because there's no better place. I know I'm not the only one, so, hmm. cheers. <laughs> On the brighter note, I have 71 days till graduation, woohoo! So as I'm celebrating, I thought I would um, just kind of share my personal statement that I wrote for my GPR slash AGD residency application, as well as share some tips. Because when I started out in May, in the middle of the pandemic, even though I had nothing better to do, I just could not write it because I didn't know what to write about myself. And I would think for those who are applying this coming cycle, it may happen to you as well. During the day, I'm a professional. Keep my stuff together for my patients. Have a happy YouTube channel. It's not that I was trying to hide my personality on purpose. I'm just kind of awkward talking to myself in front of a camera even though I do it all the time in my Insta story. So anyways, where was I going with this? More wine. Thank you so much for still watching this video. So before I share my personal statement and my tips, um, please remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave a comment below if you find this content helpful so I can make more videos like this. Um, and also turn on your notifications so you can watch the video when it comes out because that is true love. Thank you. Okay, so personal statement. So by the time that you're watching this video, chances are that you already got into dental school and you're considering dental residency applications. Congratulations. There are a few resources that I actually did use. I will leave the links to those resources in the description box below so you can check those out. If you're a pre-dental student looking for a personal statement, please leave a comment below and maybe I'll make a different video on personal statement for dental school applications. But this is residency application, a little different. I think the strong personal statement needs to serve three things. Number one, it should be personal to you and your causes. Two, clearly elaborate your main points. And three, flow easily and be easy to read. All across the board for dental residencies, I think there are two qualities that program directors definitely look for in pretty much any resident. And number one is someone who is teachable because you're there to learn something new, right? So if you're coming off defensive to any constructive criticism, you're kind of not only hurting yourself from learning something new, I feel like you're also taking everything too personally and you're making everyone's lives more difficult for no reason. Because someone is trying to teach you out of good intentions and will, but if you're gonna be like, ah, don't tell me this, that's not be that student. Number one, be teachable and be open-minded. And number two, be a great team player. Because maybe you guys have on call, and you have to like split the load and the scheduling. Or maybe you have a really crazy patient load that day and everyone has to just, you know, chip in a little bit to help a resident out. So being a team player is very important for any program unless they're looking to, I guess, just pick one. Then I suppose it doesn't matter. In real life, you have to work with people. So be a team player. So those are, I think, the two qualities that program directors look for. But this whole like writing GPR, AGD personal statement has been a journey for me. You know, I've been trying to write it since May when I had nothing better to do last year during the pandemic. And I, I think I kind of finished it towards like September because I was just so lost. Um, which is why I wanted to really make this video. So what did I write on my personal statement? Um, I think to start off, I wrote down a few main points about myself that explains why I'm interested in applying to another year of general dentistry residency and also what will make me a good candidate. So I wrote four things. Number one, I am responsible. Number two, I want to be as prepared as I can and I am teachable. Three, I want to develop my own critical lens to diagnosis, treatment, and planning. And four, just talk about my future plans. In general, you start with a hook. Maybe it's an anecdote, maybe it's a catchy quote. And I think you should end your introduction with something that will kind of give a hint to what you're gonna talk about in your next few paragraphs. What do you call that? Thesis? You know the last sentence that like matters? 
basically you write that and then you take those points and pretty much elaborate topic by topic by paragraphs and then you end on a strong note by summarizing your main points and ending on something that will hint to your future aspirations i think that's probably the best and an additional tip is show don't tell when you meet someone for the first time you don't say hey i'm a good friend you just show that you're a great listener you're a great support and you follow through your words with your actions and that's how people know that you're a good friend right so same thing with personal statements you don't say i'm a great dentist i'm a great student you like list out what you did what you thought what you went through your reflections and that's what it is and i also want to say that for any residency programs in general most program directors want to know what kind of student you've been in dental school and what your aspirations are and this is also why they care about your you know ethics and if you've been morally upright people who write your recommendation letters as well as pds will ask if you've cheated before if you've gotten to like academic probations or if you've gone through disciplinary actions so be ready to answer those if you've been in those although i'm not sure what would justify cheating that confuses me for those specifically applying to gprs this is a hospital-based program aka you'll be treating many medically complex patients so i think it's a good idea to briefly mention how you view oral health with regard to the whole systemic health because you're treating you're handling a lot of medical conditions and a lot of medications with covid and clinics shutting down like march of last year i didn't really have a lot of clinic exposures and i was just getting comfortable doing exams and like a few crowns and operative i didn't really have a crazy anecdote where i made a huge difference in the patient's lives or i didn't really have any crazy rewarding story to tell let alone know enough like faculty where i feel like they will write me a good recommendation letter so I was really stressed out last year, even though I wasn't doing much. It didn't help that last year, it was probably the most competitive season ever when it comes to applying to dental residencies. I would really like to thank my friends Jen, Sun, and Julia for actually remembering the good things I did and telling me what they admire about me and appreciated that I did as a dental student because without it, I wouldn't have even gotten the inspiration to write whatever the heck I did. And I'm not saying my like personal statement is that great or anything, Rather, it's pretty lengthy um, and, uh, you know, it's just very meaningful to me and most people might not like my personal statement, but it's just what I wrote. And I think I had many glasses of wine like this and I just wrote my entire draft in one night. And after you write your draft, obviously you want to ask your friends, family, and people to help you edit your essay. Please, like, given the right to be blunt and honest about your personal statement, they're really offering their time and energy to like read through word by word if things make sense, if things flow, if this is necessary, unnecessary. I'm definitely getting a little bit of that flush, that glow, but that's okay. That's life. And also remember to send thank you cards to those who helped you out with your application. Be appreciative. Show them that you care, okay? I highly advise that you don't plagiarize my work. Who knows if I've applied there and someone's already read it, or maybe the program director has already watched this video and know what, what I'm talking about. If you copy it, you're considered unethical, which no patient, program directors, or peers would want, okay? Don't be that unethical person. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm gonna read it now. Thick white flurry blinded my eyes with a large thud as I yanked open my reluctant clinic locker on a hot Sunday afternoon. After endless patient casts I poured over my first few weeks of clinic, an open bag of plaster covered the crime scene, including every shelf, my sweaty forehead, and now spoiled black backpack. As I stood speechless at the mess, I was tempted to close the locker as if nothing had happened and enjoy the summer weather outside. But something tugged at my heart, my first patient who grinned so widely as I parted ways with his next appointment, tooth number four and milk composite. It's been over a year since I've done a box prep and he was counting on me to take care of his recurrent decay after a traumatic experience with his previous dentist. I did not want to let him down as I performed my first live operative procedure on him, let alone drill out the existing restoration decay. I swept the floor, picked up my bag of mannequin shroud, hand pieces, and typed it on with extra number four practice teeth, and walked down the empty hallway to pre-clinic as I texted a senior SOS to coach me. Responsibility was a word that redefined itself in my heart as I entered clinic in my third year of dental school. Contrary to providing ideal treatments on a mannequin during preclinical years, 
My patients were trusting me to properly diagnose her dentition and the oral cavity in the wide range of complexity and to treat their symptoms with my own hands. Moreover, some patients presented with comorbidities and extensive list of medications that pushed me to understand their oral health with regard to the systemic health and modify the dental care such as types of anesthesia and pre-medications. As I completed my first few patient exams and learned from various cases, I realized that a few prior workshops and assisting requirements did not fully prepare me for clinic. I needed more practice and insight from faculty and upperclassmen to constantly improve my knowledge and skills and gain confidence. Otherwise, the consequences were too costly and detrimental to both parties. By the time my patients sit in the chair, they are unaware of the amount of time I took to prepare to confidently treat them. A few days prior to my first 150 exam appointment, I spent hours in the radiology department practicing taking full mouth x-rays of diagnostic value with Dexter. Before my first scaling, I had assisted multiple times leading up to my turn to intently observe how to perform IAM block and palatal injections and how to methodically remove subgingival calculus from various positions. In addition, I'd even asked a hygiene school professor to teach me how to angulate curettes and scalers with their whiteout pepidons. Prior to my firsts, I had assisted seniors to help them work more efficiently and for me to absorb as much procedural sequence and knowledge as I could. Every appointment was a sacred promise I made to my patients to be prepared. The challenges to be overcome varied as the diverse patient pool presented complex medical histories and treatment plans unique to their own, and I soon learned to embrace the unexpected and think not only on my feet, but also on my eyes. Dentistry is like studying an artistic masterpiece for a long time, as years of expertise and maturity allow one to fine-tune one's lens to view the same painting yet catch new details. More than my hands, it is my eyes that are being trained to detect levels of severity for caries management and visualize clown prep dimensions and undercuts while considering the occlusion, aesthetics, and function of the whole dentition. The creative solutions tailored to the individual needs of the patients are in the questions posed by their own oral cavity requiring keenness. I grew to appreciate the various interpretations of the same case amongst different faculty and the multiple treatment options that were made available to patients. In turn, it inspired me to develop my own specific lens in dentistry and to pursue an additional year of training to elevate my diagnostic and clinical abilities. I desire to shift my focus from replicating what I already know to cr thinking critically with the needs of the patient as a whole and assessing the unique oral architecture in its entity. Finally, I wish to offer quality dental care to the underserved through global and local sustainable outreach efforts. I believe that a responsible dentist would invest in one's communities and help reduce barriers to dental care. As I have served along with a team of dentists and students to Nicaragua and Guatemala since 2016, I observed oral manifestations of the poor in gross decay and calculus. While the dentist performed extractions and alleviated the symptoms of periodontitis, I taught oral hygiene instructions and explained the causes of their conditions. As I emphasized the importance of toothbrushing, flossing, and dietary habits with the translator, they smiled back and thanked us. Despite having difficulty breathing at high altitudes of Guatemala, I was incredibly grateful for this opportunity to educate and empower patients to take ownership of their oral health. Moreover, as our team provided root canal therapies and implant procedures with the Nomad X-ray for missionaries in collaboration with a local dental lab, I became inspired to establish Dental Clinic of South America one day to work together with local and visiting dentists and offer more comprehensive and sustainable dental treatments to those in need. To practice investing in my local community in Boston, I became involved in the Sherwood Dental Project in Malden, Massachusetts, during which TOPS medical and dental students work together to provide free screen exams every other Tuesdays. As our clients mostly comprise of immigrants and children, our eboard has been interested in understanding their challenges to receiving timely oral care and helping them find a dental home. <laughs> Maybe it's so long, you can't do it. Okay, get it together. Being a responsible dentist encompasses clinical and technical excellence, confidence to treat medically complex patients, and compassion to serve and empower local and global communities to improve their oral health. While I have begun taking steps towards my goal, I know I have many areas of growth in order to feel prepared for the unexpected. Due to the limited clinic exposures in the current pandemic, 
I deeply desire to undergo an additional year of training in general dentistry to become an excellent dentist who confidently provides comprehensive dental treatment for patients as a whole while understanding their systemic conditions in relation to their oral health. I look forward to gaining a valuable experience in being part of the multidisciplinary dental care, learning about complex treatment options, and cultivating my own keen lens to dentistry. The end. That was so hard to like read. I know this essay is not perfect. This is very personal to me. I really meant every word that I wrote and I hope that this offered a different perspective for those that are considering to, you know, apply to residency programs this coming cycle and more. And if you have any questions, please um, comment below and I'll answer anything you have. And back to editing and drinking more wine I go. Bye.